Alrighty, for problem number five, um, we need to check if there is a way that we can factor something out, right? So our greatest common factor. In all of this, if you notice, each number is divisible by three, so we can take out a three. So in this case, we would have three times, let me erase that, three times something, right? So we need to divide this by three. And that just gives you a x squared. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Divide this by 3. Divide this by 3. So in here we have plus 15 divided by 3 is 5x. And 18 divided by 3 is just minus 6. is equal to 0. Okay? So when we do this, we need to break it down even more okay so after that I wanna find factors that multiply to negative 6 and add up to 5 so how about a negative 6 and a 1 well that won't give me a positive 5 so about positive one, 6 and a negative 1 and that works so, we break it down even further, and we have 3 times x minus 6, sorry, plus 6, and x minus 1 is equal to 0, right? We need to make our two equations. Okay, so when we make two equations, it doesn't matter if you put the 3 with this one or with this one, the 3, I mean, the 3 is just going to go away and it's not going to make much of a difference, so when we have it, I'm going to put it with the first one, so 3 times x plus 6 is equal to 0, and, and the other one is x minus 1 is equal to 0, and here we add 1, we add 1, so x is equal to 1. So that is one of the answers. In here, we have to get rid of this 3 in order to work with this, okay? We need to take care of things out of the parentheses. So we can either divide this by 3, sorry, not by 2, by 3, or distribute the 3, okay? I'm honestly, the easiest thing for me is to divide by 3, divide by 3. That goes away, and then I have x plus 6. And in here, 0 divided by 3, right? 0 divided by 3 is just going to be 0. We subtract 6, subtract 6, and we get x is equal to negative 6. That's the other answer. So that's how we, we need to find the common greatest factor in here. And then we can go to the next step. Okay, for the next problem, for problem number 6. So in here, we have difference of squares. So when we have difference of squares, right, that's something square minus something square. We can break it down. In here, we have an x. And in here, we have a 9. So in here, we can turn this into x plus 9 times x minus 9. This is just factoring from the previous step. This is equal to 0, right? And in here, we can say x plus 9 is equal to 0, and x minus 9 is equal to 0. So when we add 9 on this side, add 9 on this side, we get x is equal to 9, minus 9, minus 9, x is equal to negative, negative 9. So those are the answers. Other way to do it, okay, we have x minus 81 is equal to 0, right? In here, we only have one, sorry, x squared. We only have one x, so we can add 81, add 81. And we would get basically 
x squared is equal to 81. Okay, when we take the square root, take the square root, we do plus and minus. So we have x is equal to plus square root of 81, which is x equals 9. And then the other one is negative square root of negative 81, which is negative 9. So we get the same answers. Okay, looking at problem number 7. We're going to erase this. So problem number 7, we do the exact same thing. Try to break this down. And here there is no greatest common factor. There's nothing we can take out of all of them. So we have x and x. We need to find factors of 12. Multiply to 12 and add up to negative 8. So how about a 12 and a 1? That will never add up to negative 8. What about... Uh, 6 and a 2. That ups to 8, but not negative 8. And we want negative 8. So we need to make this negative, both of them. So in here we have negative 2 and negative 6. We make two equations because we have something being multiplied times something else, and this equal to 0. So I'm going to make two equations. x minus 2 is equal to 0 and x minus 6 is equal to 0 so in here we have x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 6 when we solve them those are my answers all right let's go all the way down for uh, the next problems 8 9 and 10 so for problems 8 9 and 10 we're gonna need a calculator So, okay, for problem number eight, uh, the first thing we need to make sure is that we know the vertex, okay? So in here, the vertex comes from these two numbers, okay? So we always change the sign of that one, so we have a two and a negative one. We change the sign of that one, but not of this one. So in here, in your paper, you should have a point that says two and negative one, you should have a point there, okay? So we're gonna graph it in the calculator. It's important that you know how to graph this in the calculator, okay? So in here, we're gonna go and set y equals, and we have two parentheses, x minus two to the power of three. And then we go to the left, All right, we have to click the arrow to the, I mean to the right, and they put negative one. We grab this, and we get something like this. Now, I'm gonna go to the table. Go to the table, second graph, and go to the table, and then we can see that we have, here, we should have a point that says negative two and one, and we do, okay? From that point, I wanna pick some nice points to the right, so we're going to go down and to the left. So we're going to go up, okay? So some nice points. So we can pick 1 and negative 3. And if we find another nice number, we can graph that one. But we don't find any other nice number because that one is totally out of our graph. So 0 and all the way down, right? So we'll just pick some numbers that are above that now. Sorry, below that. Let's pick uh, maybe a 3 and a 1, so 3 and 1, and those are the only numbers, okay? So, we have a graph that kind of looks like this. And that graph is going to keep going, keep going up, keep going up, and to the right, and keep going down, 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 and to the left. So. These problems also ask for domain 
and range. Okay, the domain and range would be from negative infinity, right? If we read it like this, it's going to go all the way down to the left. So it's going to hit this all the way it goes, and then it keeps going all out. So from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. The range is from the bottom all the way to the top. So it's also from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. We always start with the smallest number when we do the domain and range. Okay. So for problem number nine, we do the exact same thing. Okay. We need to first find the vertex. So in here we have, we change that value. Okay, so negative one and positive three. So we should have a point here at negative 1 and positive 3. So let's grab that. Negative parentheses x plus 1 to the power of, right? We go to the carry to put the power of this carry right here. Power of 3. Go to the right and put plus 3. We graph it. We should have a point which you know a point that is crossing here so for this problem we should have the point negative one and three okay after that we're gonna graph that's the middle point that's where things change direction right that's that so we should have some points to the right of this and some points to the left so I'm gonna go up and find some nice numbers like negative 2 and 4 and we have another point that we'll find in the graph so we'll find other point here at 0 and 2 and another nice point 1 and negative 5 so all the way over here so we have all of these points now we can graph our line and remember it should look something like this so when we graph it kinda looks like that so remember this keeps going up 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 into the left and down 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 into the right so when we do the domain and range okay domain is gonna be from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity and range would be the exact same thing because it comes from all the way down and keeps going up, 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 up. So negative infinity all the way to positive infinity.